It's time for the most exciting driver release of 2023 for me. Is this club going to replace my Ping G425? What is it? Well, it's the Ping G430. Now, I moved into the Ping G425 last year for one reason and one reason only, forgiveness. It was undoubtedly the most forgiving driver I had ever tested and ever played. It gave me so much confidence when, play, when playing out on the golf course that I was going to be in and around fairways every drive. It gave me great distance, but it wasn't bombing it out there. there was, it was definitely a spinny driver, but kept me in play and gave me lots more confidence with my driving, more than I'd ever had with any other golf club. Well, now the G430 has come out, and this promises to be just as good, if not better. Well, I'm gonna put it to the test. I'm gonna put it to the test in the studio. I'm gonna get numbers. I'm gonna see what sort of distance and what sort of accuracy I get. That's important for me. What is my dispersion gonna be like? And I'm gonna go out on the course. I'm gonna go out on Whitsand Bay. I'm gonna put this in test out on the golf course and see if it gives me the same confidence that the G425 does. And if it does, can it then replace the G425? While I get numbers in the studio, we're gonna head out to the Whitsand Bay, we're gonna look at those beautiful views, and we're gonna hit the club that I want to be the best club of the year. So come out onto the 14th here at Whitsand Bay, and some of the views out here are absolutely stunning. And this is a hole that requires quite an accurate tee shot, which is why I've come out here to test this ping golf club. Now, it is a blind tee shot, and if you go right, so if you're a slice of the ball, you're completely on the road and out of bounds. And if you go left, especially in the summer, there's a wild flower meadow. So although it's quite a large landing area to go into, with it being blind, it's quite a difficult tee shot to, to sort of have. In order to attack it, it is stroke index two on our card. In order to attack it, you do really need to be hitting a driver. So the line is just right of Lou Island in the, in the distance and then try and draw in it round. You do have a lot more room left than you think, but it's still a pretty intimidating tee shot. So I'm gonna hit a couple off here and see if this performs on the course as well as my G425 does. Oh my God, it is so good. Oh. I mean, that is just world, worldy level that went straight with a very slight draw to it I like i struggle with drivers in the studio and you will probably see that come the numbers it's not my favorite place to hit driver but on the course the noise the sound and the feel of this compared to the g425 is like chalk and cheese the 425 is so loud whereas this just sounds amazing that's the perfect drive absolutely the perfect drive down this hole can we replicate it though God, that's just like, they are gonna be right next to each other, straight over that post. <sighs> when I was hitting this in the studio and I did a comparison with Dan, I was like, yep, like changing instantly. And then we'll go to do the numbers, when we go through the numbers, I was a bit like, am I seeing enough difference between the G425? First time I've hit this out on the golf course and I am massively impressed. When it comes to consistency with distance, I know it's only two shots, but you really do not get any better dispersion than that. And for me now, that's what I want from a driver. I want that consistency with dispersion. I want that accuracy. You know, it's all go very well and good hitting 300, 310 yard bombs and things like that. And don't get me wrong, I want a driver to do that. But I would rather be here on the fairway than there in the trees that's for sure now that's why i went to ping in the first place that's why i went to the g425 i knew i was sacrificing distance for dispersion i was getting more spin but my accuracy has gone up tenfold anyone who's watched me play over on dan's channel at east sussex national and bovey let's ignore princes although even at princes i drove the ball well i, I am losing distance but I am in play a lot more than I've ever been in my life when it comes to driving. So that G430 has to be as good, if not better, and those first two tee shots, superb. Like, I cannot fault them. I just felt confident over it. It felt familiar, 
like everything the G425 is, but I'm telling you now, it looks so much better down at the ball. So come to the 16th hole here, and it's like this requires accuracy again. So there's a 13th to the left, there's a 17th to the right, and in the summer, if you land on the 17th, it barrels down into the rough. Um, and if you snap hook it left, you've got a chance of going out of bounds. So going through the middle of this hole is really, really important to be able to get a good approach shot to the green. Because if you go too far left, there's trees in the way, and again to the right. Again, this for me, this would always be a drive that I would expect to get in the middle of this fairway, or you know, at least to the left side of it. What I like about this G425 is down at the ball, those turbulators frame the ball into the center of the club where you want it to be. That's what I loved about the G425, and you're getting the same with the G430, except now you're just getting that little bit of accenting around the back. But if you're a ping player, familiarity will be there from sort of G410 onwards, really. Right, let's see if we can get a good one away. Oh, just lovely fade into the fairway. Yeah, that's just everything I'm wanting it to be doing. So, so far, I've hit three fairways out of three with this, and that's exactly what I want Ping to be doing. The sound, it just, it sounds superb, feels superb. Like, this driver is a big, big win for me from Ping. So I thought I'd try and hit a high fade, and it's just gone a little bit straight, but it should come back into the fairway. Yeah, so that's just left side of the fairway. With that one, it is slightly into wind, so it's not the right time, but I just wanted to see if I could hit that one a little bit higher than the previous one. Technology-wise with this ping, so you're still getting the forged face, which is what you used to, you would get with the G425, but you're getting a slightly thinner face. I think it's like 0.1 mil, slightly thinner, um, on the face, so you will not notice that when you're playing if you're a G425. It's so minute that you're literally not gonna see it. You have got the adjustable sleeve, so this allows you to adjust the loft, but also you've got flat settings as well, so you can put the, the, the club slightly flatter. So instead of it being toe up like this, you can slightly flatten that lie, and that will just prevent you, if you're a bit of a, a hooky player, that will just sort of quieten that down and should hopefully get you a little bit straighter. Adjustable weight at the back, you can put this in fade and draw settings. So this is not gonna give you a fade or a draw. It's just if you're a player that has a slight tendency left to right or right to left, putting it in the other way will quieten that down slightly to be able to just sort of straighten that ball flight up, but you're not gonna put this in draw setting and suddenly be hitting Rory McIlroy bomb draws. It's just, that's not what it's there for. So while I go and retrieve those golf balls, let's go back to the studio and let's look at some of the data and the numbers that the G430 is giving me. So we're back inside and we're gonna look at the numbers. Now, I will say that I'm not a great fan of hitting drivers inside studios. It's just something in my head doesn't compute properly to doing it, but I've given it the best chance I can. Ball speed 150.5, it is cold in here, I'm not swinging it as fast as I should be, so, but it is consistent, you know, there's one at 146, one at 155, but all in all, pretty consistent, and 150 ball speed is, I'm not optimizing this driver, because I'm not swinging it at 100 miles an hour, I'm at about 107, 108 today. Launch angle is too high at 17.3, um, you know, better fitting would probably get this down for sure, um, but all in all, it's, it's consistent. But this is the spin is too high at 2739. Again, a better fitting could possibly um, get that spin down again. But this is about, for me, it's accuracy and how good it is compared to the G425. Peak height 47, as always, I hit my driver pretty high, so that's not unknown. An average carry of 256, not, not great, but pretty consistent. Um, and this one was one I got pretty well. You know, a, a low spinner, really, uh, and a better launch angle. That's the key to that one, was a better launch angle, ball, ball speed, better launch angle, spin a bit too high still, but then went to 270. So there is potential in this driver, but for me, when it comes to ping, and the reason I go into ping, it's not to bomb it, it's for accuracy. Now, if I work on the basis that uh, the average fairway is 40 yards left to right, so if you've got sense, you've got 20 yards to the right, 20 yards to the left, I've hit fairway every single time with an average of 9.6 to the right. This one is close to going into the left semi, 
but all in all, all of them hit the fairway, and that is exactly the reason I went into ping in the first place, was because I wanted that accuracy. It wasn't about hitting 280, 290, bomb balls and spraying it everywhere. It was about being consistent, having the ball in play, and having the ball in play would then lower my scores, and that's what has definitely happened since going into the G425. But now the G430 is exactly the same. So, so far I have four fairways from four with a 430 and the last bit of technology is the face. What they've done is this spin consistency. really difficult to say, but the spin consistency, And that's designed to give you a more consistent spin rate and that would give your dispersion more consistency, but there's less loft low on the face. So what that's designed to do is still give you the ball speed and drop that spin down if you hit it low on the face, because normally that would cause the ball to sort of ride up, spin a little bit more and ride up into the wind. Right, can we make it six from six? So this is our eighth hole here at Whitsand Bay, and this is a par five, but there are bunkers all the way down the left and right, ready to gobble up a stray golf ball. Now, don't get me wrong, you can miss left, but with my distance, the gorse on the left is in play, and the gorse on the right is in play. So this is one of those that definitely requires either a very accurate drive or a layup. Now, the further down this hole you get, the easier it is to get onto the, the green with the second shot because you want as little club as possible because of the way it's it's a very slopey sort of green to approach to with a very big pot bunker in front of it. So it does require a good drive. So I'm going to try and aim up the right hand side of this and draw it in. But if I hit it too straight, then then bunkers will come in play. So it does require a very accurate tee shot. And I've hit it well, but I've just hit it dead straight. Luckily, it is right of those bunkers. So I've got a shot in, but in the summer, that will be very heavy rough. So it's not the greatest tee shot. So that's four from five, unfortunately. So let's see if we can get a good one for our last shot. Oh, it's a great strike, but now that's gone straight into that gorse. So four from six. Sadly, uh, I've got one in play and unfortunately I've got one in the gorse that could be, it would definitely be a potential three off the tee or at least a provisional ball. Luckily I use bright yellow balls so I can normally see them. All in all, out on the course, I've been massively impressed with this. There's not been a great deal of movement with regards to sort of slicing or hooking, which can sometimes happen with drivers. With the ping, you're always gonna get that forgiveness. I'm really, really impressed with this driver, um, and it is definitely one that I'm gonna test on course in a round to see if it'll go in the bag, because for someone who uses a G425, this is definitely a step up from it. I've said it in a, a previous review on a showdown with Dan, out on course, I am more impressed with it than I was in the studio. It's time now to head back to the studio and give you my final thoughts. So what do I think then? I think that this driver is a step up from the G425. It definitely feels and sounds a lot better. Now I love the G425 noise, but after a while it can start to grind on you a little bit. So I definitely love the feel and sound of this a lot better. Looks wise, it's, you know, it looks better. It's got a few extra accents on the top. That's just more aesthetically pleasing when you look down at the club. Is there enough in this to change for me? I think so. I think definitely yes. I think this is definitely a leap up from the G425. I think once I optimize this a little bit better with a better fitting, I can certainly get a bit more better distance. The dispersion is already there, so I wouldn't want to sort of lose that. I just need to get that spin down a little bit, maybe get that launch angle down a little bit. And if I can keep that accuracy, then this is certainly going to be better than the G425 because on at the moment it's probably on par in this spec, but a few tweaks and a better fitting would definitely get me some advancements that would benefit me in my golf game. So would I change from the G425 to the G430? On the driver, absolutely yes. I think this is one of the best drivers that Ping have ever released, if not the best driver Ping have ever released. Um, out on the course, it performed really well. In the studio, it's performed well. 
I think Ping are just gonna, they're gonna top many lists of best drivers of 2023. I guarantee that and potentially could even go into 2024 because it is a two year cycle with Ping. So if you do buy this now, you know you've got the latest driver from Ping for the next two years, which is something I absolutely love about Ping. Anyway, have you tested the G430? Are you in the G425 and potentially going into the G430? I'd love to know because it's something that I'm potentially going to do as well. If so, comment down below. As always, if you've liked the video, do smash that like button. It all helps this channel, it all helps this video. And as always, if you're not yet subscribed, which a lot of you are not, please do hit that subscribe button, completely free to do, and it would mean the world to me. Lots more to come, and I will see you all on the next video.